Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A slightly later one tonight. Thanks for joining us. Get your comments in. Uh, tell of two halves, wasn't it? Welcome back to the Weekly Armchair Sports Talk. Good to have you all with us. Jamie, Stu, and Jeff, who I haven't spoken to in so long. Great to have you with us, brother. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Uh, Jamie, talk to me, man. Frustrating. That's on mute. God, there's always one. We're it. gonna we're it's gonna play bad. mute mute bingo next time. Yeah. Uh, um, I said, I said backstage. I don't even like football. Um, that's what this United team are doing to me. Um, at the minute, um, it's it was it was just like the, the first leg against Sevilla. You know, again, I mentioned that backstage is that we're in a position where we're cruising. Um, it, that genuinely that first 45, 50 minutes was one of the easiest periods of football I've seen us play in a long Car time. Carbon copy of the other fixture, Old Trafford. Yeah. And it was one of those, we, you know, we were cutting through Spurs left and right. And we looked like we were having fun. You've got Sancho. It's a great finish by Sancho. Um, obviously, again, and a great finish by Marcus as well. Um, and we just looked like we were up for it. It looked like it was going to be another long night for Spurs. And I made the mistake of putting in the group chat with my mates going, oh, Spurs have improved, you know, they only conceded after seven minutes this time. And that's obviously come back to bite me on the arse now. So, um, look, we said, again, we, we discussed it briefly backstage. Um, I think a lot of that is down to Ten Hag. Um, there's an argument of, you know, what, what what's he going to, what's he meant to do with what he's got? And obviously that's a, the, the case for backing him in the summer, but not a, not one of those substitutions tonight improved us um, or even kept us on the same level. Every single one of those substitutions brought us down a peg and, it just invited pressure on from Spurs. It gave them the uh, initiative and it came back to bite us in the arse. Malasia was absolutely poor. Um, that Fred was the Fred that we watched play alongside McTominay for, for too long. That's not the Fred that we, we've seen at the start of this season. Vegorst ran around and barely did anything. You know, put in one decent challenge and I didn't see much of him. Taking wan Saka off when wan Saka had been one of our best players um, in that 45, 50 minutes. Um, you know, again, he seems to just be on a different level this season and we, and we took him off and we were infinitely worse as soon as he comes off and Dallow went out right, Malassia went out left. Um, and so I think that, unfortunately, you know, Ten Hag's got to sit there and look at himself and think, you know, I've probably made uh, made a few mistakes there. Like, yes, granted, there's players that we don't have. We've got some injuries and stuff like that. You know, usually they're the sort of games where Garnacho comes on in the 75th, 80th minute. Um, but I just think we got we got the game plan wrong in the second half. Um, and you see Spurs build. And now for anyone as well that, that questions Harry Kane's worth and the potential of Harry Kane playing at Old Trafford, th yeah. this was a perfect game to see what he offers. That 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 man's distribution is link-up play. What he, what he offers Fantastic. his team as a captain is second to none. And he's the reason that they picked up a point tonight. I mean, as much as we capitulated. And he's the reason that they picked up a point because realistically he dictated the show. He pulled the strings. Pedro Porro was good. Hoiberg was good. But Harry Kane was realistically the one that, that, that commanded it. Um, but look, at the end of the day, um, we were 2-0 up against Spurs cruising. A Spurs had just lost 6-1 to Newcastle, by the way. And we decided to, to throw it away. So we didn't deserve anything tonight. We, we picked up a point. Um, touch wood, you know, we're still in a good position to finish in the top four. We've got another final to look forward to. It's been an it's been an interesting season so far. It's been a good season, all things considered. But of course, these moments are still going to hurt. Um, I'm sure we'll get into a few different, you know, individual performances throughout the night. But off the back of Wembley, you know, uh, Wembley wasn't exactly great either. Um, we just seem seem like we are sort of tiptoeing towards the end of the season now. We're hobbling, um, and I really hope that it's a strong finish to the season because, uh, you know, if we play like that, if we play like we did in the second half tonight against City in the cup final, then they're just going to win the treble. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, great points. And uh, just wanted to say, Jamie, uh, you've been a little bit poorly recently and it's really Good great to, back, to have you back, mate. Always a pleasure. Uh, Stu, I'll come to you next, mate. Uh, do you feel uh, and share the same sentiment? Um, I uh, There's a real problem with capitulation this season. Uh, we've been so good at lots and lots of opportunities and at many, many uh, points in the season. But when it goes bad it goes bad. And I feel like that's a real problem, isn't it? Yeah, look, look, Jamie's absolutely right, really, in his assessment of the game. 
Um, and me and Jamie, we never disagree hardly ever because we see the game the same. I, I, what I wouldn't do is use the word capitulation because sometimes you have to credit the opposition and you kind of, you were right about the capitulation, but then you quantified it by the way that Kane dragged them back into the game. And you, you were a hundred percent right, Jamie, the way that he was. And I saw a different side to Harry Kane tonight that if he does come to us in the summer has made me actually sit up and think, wow, we, we could utilize him properly. But I've got to say, guys, I saw uh, midway through the first half, this result coming because as much as we played uh, a high quality game in the first half, we were open right from the first minute. Our defending tonight, our overall balance uh, was nowhere near as good as it was on Sunday. We weren't as solid as a unit as we were on Sunday. Uh, we were sloppy in distribution. We were sloppy in possession. We were sloppy in our positional play. And we allowed what I would class to be mediocre players, such as Richarlison, give Wan Basaka a right problem um, throughout the, the you know the first half because he was just constantly running and constantly pushing and constantly pressuring Wan Basaka. Now, let's just quickly flip back to Sunday and look at the way that he handled Matoma. He'd never played against Matoma before, and Matoma had never played against Man United, as we all know. And it, you know, so it took Wan Bissaka ten or fifteen minutes to work him out. And once he worked him out, it was on top of him. And Jamie again called it one hundred percent right. Once he'd sorted the Richarlison issue out, which he had to do by himself, by the way, because for whatever reason Anthony wasn't quite on on song tonight. Um, he became our most important defender. Um, Luke Shaw and Lindelof played well separately but didn't play well together they didn't play well as a unit so we dropped off a lot and allowed uh harry kane allowed hoiberg uh two of the players you picked out jamie uh to almost dominate us uh and it gave uh ericsson a problem it gave bruno a problem and it gave more importantly it gave casemiro an issue uh because when you've got somebody who's as cute as kane is as a footballer which he is a massively key footballer, it makes it very difficult because he's popping an extra body into midfield and he will then spring uh, past Son into attack. Um, and so uh, I, I haven't got a crystal ball, but I could see it coming. You know, I could see where we were. And and, and Mark, I know you'll back me up on this. Uh, I did say we could be on the wrong side of a result tonight, didn't I, on Sunday? Uh, and, and based on, I do think we're a, a tired unit. I don't necessarily think that's an excuse, but I do think we are a tired unit. But it, w w when you are a tired unit, you become fragmented. And tonight's game was all about how fragmented we were uh, when we're, uh, we're out of possession, rather than how fluid we were when we were in possession. Even in the second half, when we were in possession, I thought we broke quickly. We broke with menace. We broke with pace. And we were dangerous. But you cannot escape the fact that whichever way we slice it, dice it, dissect it, whatever you want to say, um, Tottenham played themselves into this game beautifully. Uh, but as I say, I, I, unfortunately, I could see it straight away. I could see it pretty much halfway through the first half that they were going to cause us problems. You have to also bear in mind they brought on a very, very good player in Kulisewski. Um, you know, uh, he was uh, a bit more dynamic, a lot quicker. You got dangerous crosses, whether people like Perisic or not. He's been doing it for years, uh, up and down the left wing, putting in some dangerous crosses. So, um, somebody says two points dropped. I can, yeah, agree with that. You know, we were two nil up, two, two points dropped. But football's ninety five minutes, fellas. It, 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 it isn't forty minutes or 38 minutes whenever we were turning it up, it's 95 minutes and you have to concentrate. We didn't concentrate. So it is what it is. Uh, we've got to move on. I think we've got a really, really difficult game against Sunday uh, against Villa. So, uh, yeah, that's my assessment. Anyway. Yeah, uh, great points well made. Uh, not looking forward to Villa myself, actually, for many, many reasons. Uh, a lot of Villa friends around here that will have it in for me, I'm sure. Uh, loads of you watching <laughs> at the minute. Obviously, really appreciate that. Uh, also really appreciate a like and subscribe as well. I want you to come back. And my good friend Jeff in the bottom right corner. 
Uh, I haven't spoken to this man for a while. It's been a long time, brother. Great to see you. Welcome back. And for everyone in the comments, because he's such a a good man and it's been a long time, get some likes in for that. All right. Uh, uh, Jeff, uh, how you doing, bro? And how you feeling after that? All good. Um, Of course, there's disappointment uh, in the result. I uh, woke up 3.15 for this game, basically. So, 3.15 in the morning. So, so, so this man's from uh, the Philippines, and he's been watching this, obviously, for a couple of hours. It's half past 5 a.m., all right? Yeah. So, again, another light for what that, what that one, an absolute soldier. So, like, I was had a feeling that, you know, uh, we had a really thin bench. So, when that first during that first half, we should have, like, gotten, like, 3, 4 nil because if we didn't, then we'd be in trouble and you know with the with our issues with the finishing i said ah this is gonna be a long second half and right at the get-go from the second half you can see that there's more energy from the spurs so credit to them right i think they they trust mason more other rather than stellini at this point at, previously when conti went out right so pretty disappointing i was surprised that casemiro was Basically anonymous in this game. Yeah, it, he's uh, not. He's not quite been right since his return yeah. from his ban, has he? He's not been on right. it. Uh, there was a couple of great moments he had tonight. A wonderful bit of skill, uh, a great control at one point, but that was pretty much mm. all I can remember. Uh, yeah, and, I just, uh, he's not on it, is he? Nope, not. On it. I just remembered he was in the game like latter part of the second half, and to the point of substitutions, like Ten Hag is kind of forced with his hand at this point, like. We didn't have a center back at the bench. Uh, we didn't have really game changers, unlike Spurs, who had Kulsevsky, as Stu had mentioned. Uh, so, you know, I think he's also managing um, the game for Sunday because compared compare Spurs and Villa at this point, um, like form is two ends of a spectrum, right? Villa's in the form of their lives, uh, mm-hmm. Spurs basically dropping down. If this result happened in like January, December, this would have been a fine result. But at this point in the league, so it's a two points drop definitely. So looking not really looking forward to how we how we perform in Villa, but hoping for the best, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um uh, you you mentioned actually about uh, Ryan Mason. Actually, uh, Steve was on the show last night uh, on the preview uh, Spurs fan, and he did go into that uh, obviously of course, a bit of a new manager bounce, but something that uh, Ryan Mason has done when he's been you know, caretaker and involved on a few points now, he has that little bit of fight in him. He's prepared to make a few sacrifices and that's exactly what he did uh, with a couple of substitutions, particularly in the second half. And uh, unfortunately, that came to bite us uh, and uh, very, very disappointing. Uh, a lot of you have mentioned about Eric Ten Hag tonight. Obviously, love the man. Wonderful things. Can't. Uh, sing his praises enough. But as Jamie said, and I'll come back to you, I want you to elaborate on that, brother. Uh, he does need to take some of that blame tonight. He made two particular subs, which I don't think were needed in um, uh, Malaysia and Dalla coming off. Should have stayed on that left-hand side. of uh, Aaron Wambasaka, sorry, and Dalla moved over, didn't he? And of course, Fred as well. And that they were both very poor. Uh, Malaysia for the second goal, and Fred gave the ball away so many times, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can almost, you can sort of see the cogs ticking in his head that you know Wan Bissaka's on a yellow card. He's worried that maybe he picks up another one, but it was his first booking of the season for a man that goes into so many challenges and get and and, and times him perfectly. You sort of have to give him the benefit Very of the good doubt point. and think, and think, oh, we can trust him to stay out for another fifteen minutes and and not pick up a second yellow. Um, Malasia hasn't looked. He, you know, he looked bright when he when we started the season. When he was, um, you know, battling with Shaw for that left back um, spot, he was looking good. He seems to have regressed. You know, he's a he's a young man and he's still got time to develop and things like that. But he was cul- he was massively culpable. But it's a big ask to make that change and say, look, Tottenham are pressing; they're the better side at the minute, and we're, you know, really really holding back their pressure. We need you to go out and we need you to operate in the channel that um, Harry Kane's been operating mainly in and try and protect against him. It's a big ask for any fullback in the world, let alone Tyrell Malasio, who has been in and out of the side recently and hasn't had a string of, of good performances. Um, and it cost us, you know, that, that's where the, the equaliser comes from. I mean, granted, the mark at the back post is poor, um, but you've just changed your defensive shape 
completely in the last five, 10 minutes. So I'm not surprised that Dallow, who's been so used to sitting out on the left-hand side, isn't tracking back. I'm not making excuses for the players here. It's just one of the first times I feel that I've really got an option to to, to say that it's Eric Tanag that needs to really look at himself here. Um, and, and it's it's just a tricky one. And I think, obviously, what we really need to be looking at now is the depth that we bring into this squad and the players that the profile of players that come in need to be correct. Whether it, we're buying players to to come and you know again strengthen the squad and that they're not going to start week in week out, or whether it's players that are going to take the starting spot of somebody else and push somebody else into the bench, there needs to be a profile of player that we bring in so we can be making changes in the 60th minute that don't cost us a game because we have seen that quite a few times over, in recent months that the changes that we make invite the pressure, they change the momentum, they stop us playing the way we were playing. Ericsson coming off was was bizarre because immediately we lose that control and that calm in the middle of the park, especially with how, obviously, Bruno, I think Bruno was, was very good again tonight. Um, with the way that Bruno was drifting and he, you know, he was pushing forward a lot, Casemiro, you've mentioned, wasn't as imperious yet as he has been the rest of the season. Ericsson was a was a calming presence in the middle of the park. He knows Spurs really well. You know, played for him for seven years, um, and everything that man did tonight pretty much came off. You know, there was that one that one time ball that he put into Marcus. It was absolutely delicious, um, and I just thought that Ericsson coming off for Fred was very bizarre because we instantly lost that that presence, that calming factor. We lost the ability to distribute the ball between the lines and, and Fred misplaced every single pass pretty much. I, I don't know, that might not be the correct stat, you know, obviously don't quote me on that. But pretty it looks as if, yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think you're him. far wrong, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm just trying you've to find got, out. You've got Sabitzer sat there. Um, I, would, I would have rather seen Sabitzer come on for it. If we're going to take Ericsson off, you bring Sabitzer on. Um, and then I think that bringing on Martial and Vegos at the same time just killed any sort of goal threat that we might have had. Um, well, we didn't bring them on the same, you know what I mean? But having them on the same, on the pitch at the same time, because you've instantly got Martial, who just looks off the pace, he doesn't look interested. And I do think for a man that is fighting for his United career, which I personally think is, is done now anyway, you know, he'd be moved on in the summer. You'd expect to see a little bit more fight, a little bit more um, movement and, and passion from him. You know, there was that moment where Anthony tried to play the ball into him and was then shouting at him for not, moving a bit quick enough and, and for, for being too static. And you, you imagine that that's the frustration that you get playing with him at times. Um, so I just think that them two didn't complement each other. Rashford ends up getting stuck out wide and not in the way that we like to see Rashford out wide. He wasn't playing as an inside forward. He wasn't playing, tucked into the fullback. I mean, he had a, he had a good few moments, but he was he was hugging the touchline a lot. He was, um, wasn't was linking up well with Martial. Everything they were trying just didn't, um, just didn't come off. And you've got to say that there's a lot of players still... At, hanging around the club that Ten Hag's got to be looking at and going, if I can't trust you to come on at 2-0, 2-0 up at a Spurs side that have just lost 6-1 to Newcastle, if I can't trust you to come on and, and at least just stop us from losing, what can I trust you with at this at, at this football club? So, yes, Ten Hag is probably to blame um, for the uh, for, for the um, the result tonight. Um, but there's some players in there as well that I, I really hope he gives them um, both barrels, I hope he really drags them because he, it's it, it's a pain for for the players. You look at the likes of Bruno. Bruno's probably sat there thinking, "What more can it? What more can I do?" Sometimes in it, for this football club, I think you know, Stuart the nail on the head. I think Luke Shaw and Victor Lindelof were both very good tonight individually. I think Shaw was fantastic for most of the game, yes. um, and yeah. the, the fact that he stepped in so often when needed to a centre half and has put in the performances that he does, I think, is a credit to him as a man. Um, and this is the yeah. Luke Shaw that we all knew that we were going to get at some point. And, and yeah. he has been fantastic. But there's there's players week in, week out, we probably sit there and think, what more can I do at this football club to stop us from, well, not, not capitulating, but you know what I mean, to stop the other people from ruining it for us. Um, and it must be frustrating. The, it must the, be absolutely thing, frustrating. The thing is, Jamie, just to interject there, like this, this, this is something that isn't new to us. I think that, you know, over the, the course of the last few months, we've been very lucky probably to be in, in the position and get the results that we have. But we've always had this issue of squad, uh, you know, a, not a good enough second team, essentially. The players can't fit in, as you were saying. And obviously that's not on Eric Ten Hag, that's on the club and, and these things need to be addressed. But... But, you know, th this has worked for us before. We've had that same squad of players all seasons, right? Barring a couple that have been injured, so and so. So what do you think 
that difference is now? Surely it's got to be more to do with obviously the players that are coming on, but also due to fatigue as well. Yeah, I think again, Stu mentioned before we're like a tired unit. You know, we've played the most amount of football in. In I'm pretty sure that stat's still accurate that we've played the most amount of four, uh, football out of any side in Europe. Um, we've won the most amount of games as well in top five yeah, leagues. Yeah, and this is and this is what I was saying before. You know, it's been a good season, all things considered, and I just really hope that this final, te- you know, seven or eight game stretch, um, well, it's not even going to be that anymore, is it? It's going to be six games. Doesn't derail what's been um you know a phenomenal season for us um we just like I say we look like we're hobbling to go over the line we've got players that are coming back in from injury we've got um players that are operating in different roles for us every time they play you know Vegost again I'm not defending him here because he was I think he was just poor tonight but Vegost has, has spent time playing as the lone centre forward Vegost has spent time playing as a, as a number 10 you've seen Vegost at times slot into centre mid and play a sort of a box, almost a box to box role, and be our, our first first man in defence. And um, Fred again doesn't know whether he's playing as a defensive midfielder, as an eight, as a ten. You know, so th- these players are coming in and out of the side, um, playing different roles, and maybe they just don't have the opportunity. Um, so maybe they just don't have, sorry, have the ability to, to do <coughs> that. To, to be, you look at Pep Guardiola's City, right? He'll bring Bernardo Silva on at left back, and Bernardo Silva will, will be like, yeah, no worries. And put in, you know, an eight out of ten performance. He'll bring him on a centre mid. He'll bring him on a right wing. He'll bring him on, you know, as, as a as a ten or whatever. And he'll do the job because Pep Guardiola has a very specific profile of player that he likes to work with. We look at look at how he's um, ostracising Kyle Walker at the minute because Pep got bored with football again and is now chopping and changing what he wants his fullbacks. He's playing with four centre halves because mm-hmm. he's then going, you know what? Two of you are going to play as uh, holding midfielders because he just gets bored of football and he's going. Kyle Walker doesn't have the skill set that I want, and Ten Hag's going to have to get to that point with some other, and I think he is we've seen things like Maguire's been dropped again I, I don't buy this injury nonsense no I um, don't he's been kept at the side for no, a reason no. we saw him in the pre-match interview refer to Bruno as our captain you know whether that's a Freudian slip or whether he means that he's our captain on the night You, if you're reading between the lines he's protecting the player because he wants to move him on in the summer and who's going to buy a player where the manager goes he's not good enough to sit on the bench week in week out I'm going to keep him up. so do you know what I mean sorry I've gone on a little bit too long here but there's, I can add a bit of context to it, Jamie, if you like. Just a little bit yeah. of context here, because strangely enough, and what I'm about to say is going to sound a bit strange, but it's actually true. That there are some players that cannot adapt to being a substitute. They cannot come on and, and uh, you know, involve themselves into the game. And so what they tend to do, they rush around, you know, uh, like the Energizer Bunny. They just try and pull, you know, chase the ball everywhere. It's like... It's like coaching under sixes at times because they can't adapt. If they don't start the game, they've got a real mental block. And I, I think, I, th- I think it's game. also, I think it's also nobody is ready to kind of not do as they're told, but be called upon if they need to be. You know, if you want to you make a bit be. of rotation to come on and actually do a hundred ten percent. No, you absolutely no, no. But they're not ready to do you that. You know, if players bench. aren't if players aren't starting and then they're on the bench, they don't know how to adapt to come on and give a hundred ten percent. If on players bench, are on the field. Ready. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Right, ready. When you're in that changing room, right? And um and, and, and I used to I, I mean I was I, I was fortunate I was a regular, but um I would be white on a Thursday evening after training, I'd be white as a ghost until the teams announced. Uh although I'd be playing, you know, every game, and, until my name was called, I'd be absolutely panicking, I'd be white, I'd be shaking and everything. And I always used to think if I don't make the team, what have I done wrong? You know, so I'll prepare myself. And so even if you're a substitute, you prepare yourself as if you're a first teamer. You prepare yourself to be ready to come on at the cliff, uh, click of a finger. So you, you're warming up constantly. Your shin pads are in the right place, ready to go. Your shirt's where it should be, ready to put on when you need it. So you're not dicking about looking for your shin pads. You're not dicking about looking for your shirt. Not dicking about looking for a bottle. And things of this nature, they're all around you and they should, you know, you're ready to go. So when 10 R goes like that, because that's all they do, they go like that. They click the finger and you, and you know, and he's pointing in your direction doing that, you're up. Bang, 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 bang. And within 10 seconds, you should be ready and down. You should be ready and down. If you're any later than 10 seconds, you're not prepared. You're not men- mentally prepared for the game and you're not ready for the game. And this is the problem that we're having. 
And uh, you're absolutely right, Mark, but it's bang out of order because these players, you can whinge and moan all you like. I mean, crikey, for the times I was dropped, me, I'd be, I'd be, a, I'd be like a bear with a sore head. I'd be fuming, kicking stuff, you know, walking around in a fucking daze. You're right, Steve, I'll fuck off, you know, because I'm not playing. And then, but you then suddenly you switch on. And you've got to get yourself ready. So when you're in that tunnel and you're walking past them, you've got to you've got to make sure you're ready. And, you know, we weren't ready. The timing of the substitutions was bizarre, um, actually. And I think uh, somebody made a point. Um, it might have been uh, it might have been Freddie. Yeah, that's it. They, they can't seem to play ninety minutes. These guys, you know. And there's there's sometimes in a game, and I think tonight is one of those games where you don't change it where you leave it, you leave those 11 out there for the 90 minutes and you rely on them. And, you, and you, know, and you, you even say to them at the beginning of the game, look, guys, you may be on there for 90 minutes. So you've got to, you know, you've got to get your breathers when you can and things of that nature. So, you know, Jamie's right. You know, um, Jeff was right. It is disappointing. But there are failings in our squad at the moment. There's, there's no two ways. There's failings at the management level. Uh, and there's failings at player level. And, um, you know, Ten Hag, at the end of the season, when he when he does his stock take, so to speak, he does his assessment, his analogy, gets together with his coaches, gets together with the board, whoever the board is at that particular time, and he runs through it. He'll have a massive tick box for a great season, but he'll know the mistakes that he's made along the way. And the mistakes that he's made along the way, which is what we identified four months ago, um, Sorry, Jeff, you weren't on the show, but us three did, and Freddie, that they're not playing the fringe players enough. So when the fringe players come onto the pitch, they're not ready, and that's what's happening. And, yeah, and unfortunately, uh, that's down to strength in depth. And as Jamie, as Jeff, and you've said, it, it's it down is. to him not trusting the bench that he's got and the players Absolutely. that he's got around him. I think. Absolutely. Um, right. Moving on uh, to uh, going to try and try and bring the positivity back. Absolutely right. Great points. Well made. Um, I did want to come to this comment. I wanted to uh, ask um, Jeff about this one. Um, so obviously, Freddie, uh, Saj, can't be with us tonight, buddy. I hope you're well and I hope you're yeah. having a good time abroad. Uh, is it a concern that Ericsson, Sancho and Anthony, as obviously Stu's already alluded to, uh, that they can't complete 90 minutes? That first half with Jaden in particular, he was... A different player when, when it, you know what I mean he's got his goal was in there about everywhere making spaces linking up uh, he was in those pockets and he, and he was wonderful but is it a concern and and, and particularly Jaden don't want to pick on him but obviously he's been under a bit of scrutiny I think he, you know he's really got make or break really I think next season if anything is that a concern for you too and and like I said particularly with Jaden as well I think it's for this particular game as to mention it's not about the they couldn't complete the 90 minutes. Uh, I'm pretty sure they could have completed today because of how they played. I mean, Anthony was, you know, there and there, but at least he was pressing, you know, pressing back and he he didn't have like a sign of fatigue whatsoever, right? So I think they could have completed 90 minutes this game, but again, it was on the 10 hack. Like, was he making these substitutions just because he needed to, right? Or just because he wanted to, but for those three, I mean, Erickson has had a couple of games back in his pocket since that injury. Um, they could have. I mean, it's not about they can. This was more on Ten Hag at this point. So uh, maybe if they stayed on, maybe we could have that gotten that third goal at least. You know, they would have gotten two up. Uh, well, uh, that those two goals, uh, one way or another, right? Because with the energy that came out during the second half. But um, in general, we could have had that uh, three points because we can really replace them with someone, as Jamie and Stu has mentioned already, that can at least maintain that level of energy and uh, fluidity that we had, right? So um, Fred actually had that ability during the early part of the season, but for some reason he has regressed, particularly because he was on a – in a six again, but if he was like an attacking eight at this, um, he was if he came in as an attacking eight, maybe he could have done better. But you know, uh, Fred being Fred, he's not helping his case, right? So, um, 
they could have finished 90 minutes, to be honest. So that's a missed opportunity for Ten Hag there. Yeah. Not a great and just, I'm just going to quickly jump in on that as well. Um, I agree with everything that Jeff said. And then just on, obviously, the three players that we're talking about there, you know, Ericsson, Sancho and Anthony. I think, obviously, it's an interesting one because with Ericsson, you've got a man who we all know what happened to him at the World Cup. Um, the Euros. Yeah, Euros, the Euros. Yeah. The Euros, yeah. Um, so I'm not surprised that, you know, Tenag does feel like he needs to manage his fitness and manage his game time. Uh, but I, I agree with um, with what John said in the comments as well, that the way that him and Bruno were dictating and holding that midfield, it was an odd time for us to make that change. And with Sancho, what baffled me tonight is that, like you said, ten, that's probably Jaden's best period of football he's played for us all season. Um, and yeah. he, he, he got that goal in, you know, in the seventh minute and it looked like it gave him a bit of confidence. He wanted to try and go past a player. He wanted to run at players and give the ball off. So if you then take him off while he's in that sort of good form, he's going to sit there and go, oh, what have I done wrong this time? You know, and, and it's, it'll, it'll start to eat away at him. We've seen him go away for a couple of months for his um, his individual training camp. So again, maybe Tenag's looking and going, I need to manage this, this guy because I want him to be better next season. Um, and I'd rather take him off after six minutes this season and have him as a 90-minute player next. You, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but it does seem like a baffling um, decision to bring off somebody that's been struggling for form, has found some good form in, 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 a, in a big game like this. And it's, it's such a catalyst for him to hopefully go on and finish the season strong. And then he'll now go home and think, either what did I do wrong to get hooked? Or if I'd have stayed on, would I have been able to change the game and, and make a difference? And then with Anthony, it's an odd one because... Time and time and time again, we see as soon as Anthony leaves, we're more exposed down the right-hand side. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, to, today he, he didn't look as on it as he usually does in terms of his defensive duties. I don't know whether he was given a different instruction by Ten Hag, but it's something that we're repeating and it doesn't work necessarily because he has that tenacity to get back. He has a good relationship with Wan-Bissaka. He has a, you know, a decent relationship with Dallow. Stu and I have spoken about this many times yeah, over the yeah. course of this season. And whenever we, we hook him, we immediately start to concede more pressure down that defensive right hand side, and um, so it's an interesting one. I'm sure that Tenag Tenag knows more about management than I. I know, obviously, and uh, no one's debating that. It's just frustrating that tonight is something that we've all seen little bits of throughout the season, and we've spoken about, and it's all come to fruition mm-hmm. tonight. And um, so, yeah, I, I hope that the substitutions are a case of he's managing the players. He might have come in and gone you lot are nowhere near fit enough to play the football I want to play. We're going to have a rough season of yeah. training drills, fitness drills, and I'm going to manage your fitness properly so that the season after, and to be fair, they've had a baptism by fire. You know, they've played X amount of games. You know, they've played so many games of football. Um, it's good to see that, you know, Ericsson came back from his injury and still has maintained the, the high ceiling that he, he set. Um, but yeah, I think that Tenag is probably sitting there. You know, when we see the little clips of him writing notes, he's probably sitting there writing his wish list for the summer. Do you know what I mean? Going, <laughs> we need we need, yeah. we need five or six players here because he can't he can't be bringing Fred on for him to do that. I like Fred. I've liked Fred this season, but Stu was bang on when he said that Fred coming on as a substitute does not have the same level of calm and discipline as the Fred that starts a game. And uh, yeah, Tenag will be looking at or, that. Or going ultimately as Ericsson. Um, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, nowhere in the same league is he? You know, uh, and 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 it's a shame. But look, and I keep maintaining it, and I say it all the time. If you want to play at the elite level, you want to play at the elite club, the, the best club in world football. You've got to do everything in your power to stay there. I I, I say to uh, the kids I coach sometimes, it's only a very very small thing because uh, I'm not really sure you should get player of the match when you're a an under eight or an under nine, but you have to do it because the parents love it, et cetera, et cetera. But we say to the lads, look, if you've not made player of the match this week, make sure it's you that's getting the award next week. That's your challenge this week is to make sure that it's you next week. Fred's challenge is if I'm not starting, okay, then I've got to be the very best I can be when I come on so that I can start next week. And it's like, not who you're up, right? Happens. Yeah, exactly, Fred. Uh, Jeff, prove me fucking wrong. Fred. I'm so used to having Freddy here. Jeff. <laughs> I'm so used to having Freddy here. I, I'm so sorry, mate. But no to, be fair, to be fair, Freddy is equally as good looking as you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I think, I think, well, I think, Jeff's, a bit, I think Jeff's a bit better looking, if you ask me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Freddy, I would agree. Freddy's not here. So, yeah, we can say that, can't we? Uh, right. Uh, we're going to come to. Um, 
the ratings. Uh, I don't want to keep it too long tonight, boys. Obviously, we started a little bit later. My iWatch is about to talk to me, not knowing what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we'll start with David De Gea. Uh, and I come to you first, Jeff. Uh, obviously, a little bit of criticism recently. Uh, bounce back uh, against Brighton. I felt was pretty good. I think it was, you know, defensive errors uh, tonight that lets down towards leading up to the goal. Uh, but out of 10, of course, you can give whatever you want, 6.57, whatever. Uh, what would you give him tonight and uh, and a kind of a reason why, please, buddy? Well, he wasn't too busy tonight, to be fair, but um, uh, both goals, well, Porter's goal was just bonkers, right? Outside foot shot, top corner, so no chance of saving Yeah, fantastic that. finish that was. Yeah. yeah, so fair play to Poro, right? Uh, second goal was more of a defensive lapse. So I'm generous today, so might give him an eight. He didn't try to, too hard in terms of... That, that is well, generous. That is generous. Really generous. Well done, generous right. today, right? He didn't try too hard in terms of like kicking the ball short, right? So he just did what he did. He didn't get too cute about it. He just had to whack it if he needed and just pass to... You know, that's the difference, again, I guess, with Lindelof and Maguire, right? So Lindelof's way better on the ball than Maguire, right? And in terms of um, spatial awareness... So I think he was more confident uh, passing to his center backs today. So, yeah, it's a bit of a seven point five to eight. So that's on a generous side. Yeah? So, yeah, that's fair. Listen, we love all that. We love the positivity and uh, <laughs> absolutely fine. Uh, one thing I will say tonight: uh, his distribution was so much better. You know, the one thing that we can all sit here and get frustrated with. And I, there were a couple. I wonder why. Yeah, oh, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. But what I'm saying is, on the other hand, you know, I just want to point out the positives. There were a couple of points oh, tonight yeah. where he, he sort of played out from the from the back, you know, to the nearest defender, but on several occasions all over the place and, and did a great job with that. So listen, whilst we criticise him no, for that, I, I just wanted to make that point. And, agreed, uh, and, you know, agreed. And listen, I love the positivity, Jeff. Absolutely right. But you'll listen to these two now and they'll be scathing <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll see how we really rate. Uh, right, but let's go to uh, Aaron Wambasaka and I'll come to you, Jamie. Yeah, I think he was the, one of our best players tonight. Um, it's nice, you know, we've spoken for the years that we've been doing these podcasts together and I've always rated, always sang Wambasaka's praises. He went through that dip in form. Um, and even at the start of the season, you know, there was reports that Ten Hag had no no use for him. And look at him now. Look at, you know, the performance he's putting against Brighton on Sunday and the performance he's putting, he, these aren't flukes he's doing it week in, week out. And I, I think that he was he was very good tonight. And um, I like the way, I, I love the way that he, he, he pops up as almost an inside forward at times. You'll see him and he'll be on the inside inside of the area. He's, you know, he's undercut Anthony or whatever and, and he's there to, to receive the ball. And, He's developing as a as a right back. You know, he came to us as a very raw, tough tackling. You know, one of the best defensive fullbacks in the league, and he's adding more strings to his bow. And this is another uh, another good notch for him. I, it, it's annoying because of the, obviously the the scope of the game and and you know how we've we've been left with a sour taste and half. But I genuinely, I'd give him about a seven tonight. I think he was he, he was fantastic and he dealt with the threats really well. And the game changed when he came off. Yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. agree. And and let me just. Uh tell you another story really uh luke shaw uh as well and and what i'm saying is the same uh credit needs to be given to Amwan wampsaka luke shaw had a double leg break went through various managers was absolutely chastised by uh jose Mourinho. now i'm not saying Ar aaron wampsaka's uh situation is the same but it's not too dissimilar mm -hmm. okay to go out of form to have all the comments and everything that he would have seen and to bounce back in the manner that he has, I think needs to be applauded so much more. And uh, and absolutely right, Jamie. I think he was one of our better players tonight. Um, right, moving on to um, Lindelof. And I'll give that one to you, Stu. Uh, seven. I, I, you know, um, a mixed bag for me uh, tonight. I thought he played... OK, as I said, individually, but not brilliant as a pair with Shaw tonight. So it was a bit of a mixed bag. I called out position a couple of times, um, but did well against Kane uh, on a couple of times as well. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to have to give him a seven. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Uh, right. Moving on to Luke Shaw. Uh, Jeff. Oh, Jeffrey. OK, so maybe I'll give him like a seven as well. Uh, as you know, both of you mentioned already, like they've done well individually they've done their job uh they're not as cohesive as like Varane and Licha but you know um Luke Shaw has been a good auxiliary center back 
every time he's come on that position. So he held his own. Again, he, you know, he wasn't able to do much against Poro's finish, but, you know, yeah. in general, he did well. So, seven. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to give you both uh, Dallo and uh, Malasia. I think Dallo Dallow's probably a five. Maybe that's a bit harsh, but um, I think that he was the the weak link in the in the defence. I don't know if um, again, it, it, yeah, yeah I, I would uh, agree. I would agree. Opinion. Yeah, he could have had two um, rings though, like one at left back, one at right back. So. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. Um, I think he struggled with the switch as well. I think that his um, his role when he's playing left back is different than his role when he plays right back and. He struggles to make that switch sometimes, um, and I think he's been quite hot and cold for us in in recent times. He's done really well to deputise at left back. Don't get me wrong, you know, with the fact that because of the injuries to Varane and to to Litcher that you know Shaw moving across, Dallow's done well in that role. Um, but he, to, he, tonight he struggled a little bit. I think a lot of their joy did start to come from that down that side where Pedro Pedro Porro seemed to have free reign, did really well. Kane was operating around there. Obviously Perisic and Son. Had a little bit of fun, and uh, Rich Allison obviously did well uh, against Wan Bissaka originally, but um, I think Dallow was quite poor, so I give him a five. Malassia, one, disastrous, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to slate the young man. It's his first season here, but um, he needs to, he needs to sort them performances out because he's had more than one of those recently. You know, Mark, we spoke very highly of him at the start of the season that he looked bright, he looked yeah, fun. I, yeah. I, I um, think, I think his ceiling is is unbelievable. It's just. Listen, when you're 18, you come into a massive club, into a very disjointed squad, and then are playing bit parts and not able to string together a number of games, let alone good performances. I think it's very difficult on yeah, any type agreed. of character. And, and I think he, he will come good. It's just a really bad lapse in concentration on two, a couple of occasions tonight. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think we we forget he's, he's a young lad, isn't he, uh, in his first season. So, no, I agree with that. Good. Uh, right, let's move on to uh, Clasimiro, or not so uh, at the moment. And I'll come to you, Stu. Uh, over to you. Yeah, as I said before, uh, he gets a six because I think um, the addition of Kane in the middle uh, alongside Hobier uh, was a real, real problem for him. I, I, I've been babbling on about Hobier for a long, long time. Of a as a quality footballer, uh, it does the very very simple stuff very very well, and yeah. you know what it's like. The fan base slates you fucking Hobie, you must be joking, blah blah blah, and all that kind of nonsense. Well, look, just look what he, how he played tonight. He's tenacious, he was aggressive, uh, but he's good with the ball, and uh, we're just going to get to grips with uh, Hobie at all uh, in the middle of the park. Uh, and so uh, Casemiro, we suffered, so he gets a six for me. Interesting, I'm not sure if you know, but interesting little fun fact for you. When uh, Real Madrid lost, lost Casemiro, they were looking at Hoybier to replace him. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. So it wouldn't surprise me at all, and I, I rate him quite highly. Uh, right, Jeff, I'm going to give you uh, Ericsson um, and Fred, please, buddy. <laughs> wow. Uh, Fred would be a one, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going by Jamie's standards, right? <laughs> well, you couldn't give him any more, uh, Jeff. <laughs> you couldn't give him any more. Ericsson would be like maybe a 6.5, right? Because he was pulling the strings when he was there. Uh, those three in the midfield, uh, I guess Ten Hag read that stat that you're unbeaten when those three start. So I guess he was tempted to just start with them. And even though Fred operates better as a starter... He just stuck with it anyway, but uh, yeah, um, difference in form, difference in what we had to offer in the field uh, between Ericsson and Fred, so 6.5. Yeah, I think that's uh, very fair. Maybe a little bit harsh. Don't uh, don't always listen to Jamie. He comes up with some shit sometimes and, uh, and uh, <laughs> I thought maybe I, a little bit. Oh. Nah, we oh, love him. Oh. Uh, right, Jamie, uh, Bruno Fernandes. Uh, <laughs> Had an absolutely sensational first half. I thought actually one of his better games. Some of the passes that he was able to pull off were absolutely unbelievable. Probably mm. should have scored two goals himself, hit the crossbar, assisted. Uh, and then he, he was trying everything in the second half. And I can't blame him for that. So anyway, with that out of the way, over to you. Yeah, I mean, he's a complete midfielder. Do you know what I mean? He, he plays across all three of the midfield positions and he does them all 
with a with a plum. Um, I, I think he was unlucky tonight. It was that again. That man will be seething with himself because that's the standard that he holds to himself. He'll be watching that. You know, him hitting the bar. He'll watch that footage back, and you can guarantee that he'll stay behind in training and practice that situation because that's the sort of person that he is. And it would have been so poetic if he'd have scored what hopefully yeah. would have turned out to be the winner after you know the whole week of oh he's got a protection boot on. Is he going to play? Is he not? I mean, it's, it's mind games in it. Yeah. He's probably got that in the cupboard somewhere and gone to his missus. Oh, take a photo of me wearing this. It'll be really funny. Um, I think he was he was Rumpy solid. Surprise, he was, yeah. No, he was, he was he was a seven. He was a seven out of ten. Do you know what I mean? Everything he tried was coming off most of the time, and you see right at the end he, he he's running around like a like an headless chicken, but in a positive way because he wants to win for this club. He knows what it means to to this club to win, um, yeah. and he he does it week in week out for us. And anyone anyone that that doesn't see his contribution to this football club is either watching football with a TV turned off or needs to get, get themselves down to spec saving and get their prescription changed because this man is spe- <laughs> he, he, he is spectacular. Opposition fans hate him for a reason. They'll always say, oh, it's because he whines and he moans. It's like, no, it's because he's mint yeah. and you don't like it. I'm yeah. like, yeah, he does whine and he does moan, but when he's as good as he is, I don't, I don't care. So, yeah, seven, he should have been yeah. the match winner. Yeah. Well, all the uh, best players do whine and moan, uh, Jay. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course they do. That's, that's, that's what makes them great. Yeah, they want yeah. a bit more. Want a bit more. Uh, right, before we come on to the three strikers, we're going to do this uh, these next three really, really quickly, guys. Uh, we've got a show tomorrow night uh, with your man, Keen. He's hosting. Uh, we've got a, a member or two from the 1958 and mm-hmm. two former United players. It was supposed to be early in the week. Unfortunately, Keen was a little bit ill, uh, but uh, going to be a big, big show uh, tomorrow night about the protests, obviously, against Villa uh, this weekend. Obviously, you might be uh, interested, obviously, uh, a, a few sort of arrangements and stuff, so get involved and make sure you come back for that tomorrow night. It should be a very, very good one and certainly informative, uh, so make sure you come back for that. Uh, right, moving on to um, Anthony, and I'll come to you, Stu. Uh, five. Five. Quick, short and sweet. Love it. I've got, I got nothing uh, to say, really. I'm, I'm no. sorry. Just a five. Yeah. Well, we, we kind of uh, spoke about him earlier. Wasn't tracking back probably as much uh, yeah. and uh, and didn't really do a hell of a lot in the game, did he? Um, Jeff, uh, Sancho. Sancho would be seven for me. So he did yeah, well okay. enough to have. He deserved to finish the game, basically. So he could have had yeah. an eight. I think it was one of his better performances. Uh, scored the goal, obviously, and uh, yeah, can't disagree. Six or seven for me. I think I think that's fair. Uh, Jamie, over to you finally, mate. Uh, Marcus Rashford. We won't bring anyone else into play because I'm I'm pretty sure Martial didn't do much, and uh, Veghorst made one really great challenge, uh, and and that was it for me tonight. That was it, yeah, for Veghorst. Uh, but uh, yeah, Rashford. Over to you, brother. Difference maker again, and it's just he'll be he'll be fuming that you know his goal hasn't ended up being the one that, that wins us the game yeah. or whatever. Um, great finish. He had a couple of chances and another night he would have scored a hat-trick. Um, he, it's funny because we talk about, you know, it's an end of a goal drought. He's gone four games without scoring. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. His, number, his, his numbers speak for themselves and he's, you know, if we were an American team, he'd be the franchise player because he is the mm-hmm. face of Manchester United these days and he's my boy. I love him to death. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say another seven. It's, it feels weird giving these performances, these these ratings. Sorry, given the fact that we threw away a two 0 lead, but the players that we given the, the, fir- the first to, half was so good, it's hard yeah. not to, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. You know, he's maturing as a goal scorer. He's maturing as a striker. He can play either with his back to to goal. He can play as a centre forward. He can hold the ball up. He receives the ball well. His first touch is impeccable and immaculate. His link up play is getting better and better with you know his two compatriots that he, he plays most. You know, with Sancho and Anthony, they're the ones that he plays week in week out with most of the time. Um, he, he's getting better at linking up with them, and I think that we're going to see more and more come. And um, he's a special, special guy. Special guy indeed. Number 29 now. Uh, I think before the season started with the form that he was in over the last year and a half uh, and the injuries he's had, uh, no one 
uh, and I don't care who you are, no one would have guessed that many goals. Listen, boys, I really appreciate uh, all of you here tonight. I know it's a late one. Really, really appreciate your time. Jamie, great to have you back, buddy. Shoe, as always. And Jeff, great to have great you with to us. See you, Jeff. I hope you're well. Yeah, it'll be back on again, I can assure you. Listen, uh, as I said, tomorrow night, big one. Uh, preview as well at some point and uh, and a match reaction as well. And you might see some of these faces again. But until then, we will see you next time.